Hello and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking investment strategy, which I suppose is all about what to do once you've made your first investment. Just worth saying that in the interest of full disclosure, we're not going to be giving you any financial advice today and nor are we going to be recommending specific investments to buy or sell. And of course, it's worth remembering that investing does carry risk. Investments might not perform in the same way in the future as they have in the past. Well, my guest today is Ken Okorafor, who joins me in the studio to talk about investment strategy. Ken, welcome to the programme. Hello. Um, I thought before we got into strategy, it might just be worth um, you telling us a little bit about you, what okay. you do, and how you've come to be doing what you do. Right. So, I, uh, I run a site called The Humble Penny at thehumblepenny.com. Uh, it's a UK personal finance site, and the goal of the site is to help people create financial joy in their lives. And but what I mean by that is to help people think of money, when they think about money, they think of it from a happy place. Uh, and the reason for that is because most people I feel uh, are quite disillusioned about money uh, and about the future. And so the site's there to offer people insights about money, whether it's money making, money saving, investing, that type of thing. But written from uh, my, my perspective as somebody who uh, would not ordinarily have found a way out or found another path had I not started venturing into investing money and, and understanding what money is really and how it could help me and my future. So the site's there to really offer that insight into people so that they can begin to take the necessary steps in their lives to, to move to the next level in their, in, their, in their life journey, essentially. When you say a path, what was the path that you were on and what is the path that you're now on? Okay. So I, um, it might help to actually go, go, go back a fair bit. So sure. I actually immigrated to the UK 20 years ago. Uh, and when we moved here, uh, the, the UK is actually quite tough uh, if, you're, if you're new to this country and trying to find your path. And that path for us was a path of the, the, the biggest kind of goal was to uh, essentially find, have some financial security. Uh, be able to put some milk and some bread on the table, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so survival was the key thing. Um, and that path was all about uh, finding ways to actually either get a job, make some money, and essentially live uh, as close as possible to the ordinary possible, ordinary Brit. Uh, the path I am on now is a completely different one because uh, over that time, I've, I've learned a great deal about money. I've spent quite a lot of my time, uh, you know, growing as, a as an individual in my personal development. And what that means essentially is, is uh, I've, I've grown in my formal education and the informal education. The informal part is really the piece about uh, understanding how to make money work for me essentially and tie that to my present and future goals uh, and explore how that might be able to help me uh, for example, become financially independent or help me achieve certain life goals for my family um, and people around me. So all, th all that learning uh, is essentially what I'm bringing to the, the, the site, uh, written from perspective of a, a family man um, on, on a money journey, essentially. Um, and I'm hoping to get across to people that um, money is not as scary as people think. Uh, people can use money very positively. They can use it to achieve very worthy life goals. Uh, and the site's really there to, to make that happen. Okay, that's really a yeah, useful background. I think great mm -hmm. context for what we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. which is investment strategy. Mm -hmm. And as I said in the introduction, really to me, strategy is about people who've perhaps made their first investment decisions. Yes. They've kind of dipped their toe in the water, as mm -hmm. it were but aren't really sure where to go from there. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of testing it out. And there are, I think, there are lots of people in, in those um, circumstances. Mm -hmm. And when I think back to when I started investing, it really was, um, you know, a, a best guess. It wasn't an educated guess yes. about where to invest. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a best guess. And, and I suppose one of the, the, the things I wanted to ask you was how you, when you, you've made your first investments, how mm -hmm. you... Uh, get more um, knowledge about what you've invested in and, and get the confidence to kind of do it again. Yes. So a key part of investing uh, is really about consistency. Uh, initially, most people invest because they might hear other people investing and they think it's the thing to do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of investing should be driven by, by goals, kind of life goals, what people want to achieve. For example, people might want 
their children to go to a particular school uh, down the line or they might want uh, to buy their first home or they might want to retire one day or retire earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and these various goals have different time horizons and as such, working back from there, one can think about how uh, they can use money they're making today and potentially making the future to help to achieve those goals. So um, making the first investment is great, but the education really comes in from, uh, number one, understanding, well, why have I invested and what have I invested in? Uh, so, for example, some people might choose to invest in specific companies, in particular stocks, whereas other people might choose to invest in funds, which are which basically uh, baskets of companies. Mm -hmm. um, and their attitude to, attitude to risk as well, you know, because some people might say, well, actually, um, I might focus uh, on investing in funds because I think it's a diversified environment uh, and I don't want to have to think about timing the market all the time. Whereas other people might go, well, actually, I quite like the buzz of investing in Apple, as an example, or I don't know, Amazon or whichever company out there that they, they, they think might have some value mm -hmm. uh, and might prefer to invest that way. So I think as somebody who's invested for the first time, as a first time investor, if they've put money in, I think the key is to uh, tie their investing as a, as a vehicle to their goals and think, well, how can I do this consistently enough such that the momentum builds and it becomes what you do. It becomes, well, this is what I'm aiming for because I think it's that goal that gives people you know, the purpose in what they're doing with money. It sounds like from what you're saying that it could be almost uh, not a job, but like a hobby, a, a, you know, you're something you spend doing, uh, putting time into mm -hmm. outside of kind of your, your normal work mm -hmm. that actually becomes something that's enjoyable. Yes. So I think a lot of investing is seen as complicated and, um, you know, people just don't quite know how to get into it. Uh, I always say to people, just think of the stock market as uh, a vehicle almost. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you're investing through that vehicle, through that, that, that stock market, but ultimately you're putting your money into businesses down the line. There are companies with people, with livelihoods, with families and so on out there. So uh, question is, is what are you investing in and why? And a lot of that activity can be quite quite interesting. I personally find it really interesting because uh, number one, you're understanding what assets are, um, various asset classes. In other words, what companies are yes. and what companies d do essentially. Correct, yeah, and why they exist. You know, how do they create value? How, how does, again, I randomly use Apple. How, how does Apple create value? Or yeah. How does, um, I don't know, Marks and Spencers, for example, create value? Um, and how does that tie back to what I'm trying to achieve by possibly backing those businesses either directly mm -hmm. by investing in them and buying their shares or doing it via, via funds or some other path because I'm thinking about my risk and uh, mitigating, mitigating those risks. You mentioned risk twice and it's an interesting point, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, what, what would you say your attitude to risk is? Have you ever assessed it uh, formally? Are you an adventurous investor? Yes. How, how would you describe so, it? So uh, it's interesting because my attitude to risk, I think, is tied to my immigrant background. Right. <laughs> uh, because uh, I believe I'm risk loving uh, in the sense that I, I like to try new things and um, uh, I like to uh, just put myself out there, but, but very calculated risk. So right. I assess very carefully what I'm doing. I think about what the possible implications might be. I have a wife, I have two children. Uh, I can't recklessly just go and you know, take our you know, life savings and put it into one company, for example. Uh, so I think about that very, very broadly. Uh, but I think risk plays a very important role because I think it's what holds a lot of people back from actually taking that first step or even continuing investing. Um, so I think what people need to gradually, I think this comes with time, gradually understand what, what they think is their attitude to risk. Um, and it's often not that complicated. It, it's usually how we look at things every day. You know, uh, some people might like adventure holidays, skiing and so on, other, other people just don't. That might translate into how they might consider uh, investing or financial risk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Correct. And I've, I suppose I uh, come back to your earlier point that that risk can change over time mm -hmm. in terms of the time horizon that you're investing for. Mm -hmm. If you've got a much shorter time horizon, you may have a different 
uh, risk profile or risk need than yes. if you're investing for the, the longer term a pension or something of that yes. nature. Yes. So I wanted to pick you up on um, uh, uh, managing your investments because okay. um, I got the sense from you that you know you're talking about um, something which is all, you know of a personal interest to you're looking after it. Does mm-hmm. it take up a lot of your time, and how how frequently do you check your investments? Do you mm-hmm. find yourself looking at them regularly? Um, so, in terms of time, uh, my investments investments do take time to look after, but they don't take a great deal of time depending on what you invest in. I feel so. Um, if I've invested in a fund, for example, my horizon as an individual is very, very long term. So yep. I tend to not worry so much about it, number one, because it's it's a huge broad based fund, for example, an index fund, for example, or a fund of funds. Uh, or um, I might invest in individual companies. And I found that in the parts where I've invested in individual companies, I tended to worry a lot, a lot more about them. So pick Tesla as an example. Um, it's been a, in, the, in the media quite a lot recently, and um, I, I have an investment in Tesla as mm-hmm. a company. Uh, as an individual, I found myself actually thinking, hmm, I wonder what this might mean for this company that I've, I've backed and supported. And I, I, it meant that I looked at that investment a lot more. Right. Uh, but ordinarily, for the, you know, the majority of uh, kind of assets we're invested in, we, we just don't spend a great deal of time on them because we view them as, as long-term investments. I see. And if you are reading um, about, uh, uh, you know, about things you've invested in, either, either as single companies or as, as these collective uh, funds, as they're called, wh- where do you go for that information? Are you, mm-hmm. Do you, you know, read the traditional press? Are you an online reader? Do you, mm-hmm. you know, is it, is it uh, the, the traditional news? Where do you get your information from when you're thinking about your investments? Uh, so uh, I t- typically read quite a lot of blogs. So I read financial blogs, I read uh, media, general media. So for example, uh, the Financial Times I take a look at. Uh, but I try p- very personally not to uh, get swayed a lot by the, the noise out there because I think it's in the midst of the noise that people make the wrong decisions. So, right. so what I mean by that is a lot of uh, kind of group think out there. So you might read something and the majority of the press might be kind of negative on a situation or negative mm-hmm. on the economy. I think if, you, if your investment horizon is a long-term one, the, the, these kind of intermittent bits of noises that are being displayed in the newspapers and so on can almost push one to make the wrong decision, you know, cause them to sell something when they really didn't need to do that. Uh, so as much as I reach out there and I read, uh, you know, for example, the Financial Times, I read um, other blogs, personal finance blogs, This Is Money, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, as much as I do those, I take that information and ask myself, what, what does this mean for me? And uh, what should I be doing now, if anything at all? And what I've always found is that the less you do, the better. In terms of buying and selling? In terms of, yes. Yeah, so if you're in, and if your horizon's fairly long term, five years plus, the less you tinker and you know, kind of fiddle with things, uh, the, the, the better because um, there, there are costs to doing these things. Going yep. in and coming out has cost implications. Uh, so, yeah. You're trying to get a, a long-term view. Yes. And, and of course, one of the, the very successful investors of our time, mm-hmm. Warren Buffett, yes. t- tries mm-hmm. to do that. I mean, he tries Absolutely. to buy companies once, essentially, and, and keep them for the long term. Yep. Um, that's one, in, one investment strategy. There are others, of, uh, there are uh, others of course. Yeah. But is that something you're sort of emulating in your strategy? Are you looking to invest in companies that you think have got a long-term future? Yes, yeah, so I, the, the point about long term actually comes from the horizon we have as a, I have as an individual and we have as a, as a family, for example, yeah. uh, in that we're thinking about our pensions, we're thinking about various goals we have. So that horizon means that we're not looking for uh, fast money. You mm-hmm. know, we're not looking to make a, a, quick, a, buck. a you know, quick buck. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we want sustained wealth over time that can grow and compound as time passes. Um, and for that, for that to happen, we need to, you know, show a lot of patience in our investing, uh, think very carefully about what we buy into in the first place. So spend a lot of time making sure that we've done our due diligence. What I mean is essentially looking at the, if it's a fund, 
do the homework, what's it costing, or do we know that future performance can't rely on the past, what has it done in the past, who's managing the money, mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing, uh, and should we invest, what assets are, are really in this fund, um, and what's their, you know, um, are they tracking a particular index, that type of thing. So all that work's done, and we go in and then we invest and pretty much keep away from it for a long time. Um, if it's a company, again, we look at that very, very long term. For example, I have uh, for my kids in their junior ISAs, we have uh, investments in Amazon, for example. Uh, and again, those are, although we probably have one or two stocks in Amazon because it's quite, quite an expensive company mm -hmm. to buy, it's a very long term thing. And uh, we tend not to, again, tinker with it. We just invest in you know, uh, think about what next could we do with the money that, that, that we have that comes that comes by, how else could we invest it? And what I've found to be the most effective way of looking at this is just look at it from a very consistent perspective. So if, you're, if you've got 200 pounds spare every month um, and you've now decided this is your investment strategy, follow that strategy and keep up investing consistently. There'll be a lot of noise, you have a lot of people saying, you know, it's Brexit, there's all kinds of things you know, there's, oh, there's, there's, there's second, always stuff actually. happening. Of course. Um, and there's obviously, you know, uh, there's risk that the UK faces, there's risk that the US faces. But I think if the attitude is long term, um, uh, these things, the market prices these things in, and, and over time, I think the, the, the benefit will, will kind of show itself up in, in time. So. In terms of, uh, I actually wanted to ask you about geography in terms of investment strategy, because yes. you've talked about the differences perhaps between companies and, and collective investment funds or investment mm -hmm. trusts and how you approach those differently. I wondered how, how you um, build geog geographic diversification into your thinking, because yes. that can be a strategy to help mitigate some of the risks that you're talking about, yes. not investing all in the UK, yep. for example, mm -hmm. if there's something like Brexit on the horizon Correct. or not investing in the US if the political situation is, is unclear, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Does that figure in your thinking? Yes, absolutely. So the way we do it is by going for a very broad-based fund. Uh, and the reason for that is because, number one, they, are, they have footprints in various areas. So it might be uh, one that tracks a particular market, uh, or, it might, or it might be that, I'll use a very random example, so it might be one that tracks the S&P 500. Which is the leading uh, index of companies. Yeah, leading of companies index of companies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and those companies will have footprints not only uh, in the US, for example, they might have uh, bits of revenue coming from the UK or in other parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, so by doing that, and because it's very broad based, we are essentially diversifying uh, and removing quite a lot of uh, the specific risk tied to companies and mm -hmm. to whole nations, as it were. Uh, and possibly even some foreign currency related risk. So yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing, isn't it? That just because a company is listed on a mm -hmm. particular stock exchange, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, Amazon is listed on the US stock exchange. Yep. Clearly, Amazon is not a, a just a US. Yeah, business. absolutely. It's a global, a global yes, firm with right. revenues coming from around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's been really interesting. I think we've just sort of scratched the surface <laughs> um, of investment uh, of investment strategy there. Uh, I suppose my question would be: Is there is there a way to sum that up, sum that up? Are there are there three key top tips that you would take away for our watchers? Mm -hmm. when thinking about strategy, investment strategy? So I'd say the first one would be, what's your horizon? So how long do you have to, to play? Because the real assets time. So if it's long term, if it's short term, that would dictate quite a lot. The second one is, what's your attitude to risk? So that will help you decide on what type of vehicles to invest in, whether you invest in companies or funds, and so on. The third would be consistency, because uh, the more consistent you are with your investing, the more it becomes a, your internal culture, it becomes who you are and what you do, uh, and the more success you have over time because you would be invested in the market rather than out of the marketplace. Ken, that's very helpful. Thank you and very uh, insightful. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching also. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. And of course, you can find out more about investing at stepstoinvesting.com. Thanks for watching. Join us next time.